do it a little bit better. So um, anyway, uh, let's get off studio mode and let's go to this one. Hey, what Amazing. do you think about that? Can you shift me slightly to the yeah, left? I'm still working on it. I just wanted to get us okay, back okay, up here. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, and no. don't worry, I'll edit Sorry, all of this out of the actual uh, stream upload oh, if we beautiful. ever get that far. Beautiful. That'll be beautiful. brilliant. And yeah, yeah. So like, this isn't pixel perfect right now. No, but, but I think we'll all agree it's a whole lot better. Oh my hair! Oh, all that stress. <laughs> Oh, oh all that's just destroyed. But the thing is, head. I can still do this. Oh wait, look at ah, my <laughs> look, you, you got, look like you got a funny little arm, and I can go like this. Oh, you see, that, that looks that good. Looks normal, yeah, that looks but very that normal. Just looks weird. <laughs> Tiny hand. It's true. It's true though. Uh, yeah, and uh, I've got a lot of stuff on my desk that you can see here, which is weird. You can't that's usually do that. Fine. That's yeah. that's interesting. Well, you can <laughs> see. Okay, so speaking of BlizzCon, we met a friend of ours at BlizzCon who uh, a little bit earlier had asked. Uh, he'd been at a con where they were selling um, uh, Chris Metzen special. Uh, limited edition prints. And you can yes. get these at BlizzCon, but there's no uh, guarantee that you would be able to get these at BlizzCon. Uh, this is from, what, 1995 or something? 1996. It's signed in gold pen. Oh. And that's how you know it's the good stuff, right? By Metzen himself. Metzen. I appreciate Metzen not writing his name in any, like, joined-up letters or anything like no, that. No, no, makes no, It makes no. it more just, eligible. Just it makes it, you know, everyone can legible. see what it is. No mucking around. No, I hate exactly. it when people sign their name in a way that is all squiggly and stuff. And oh, you mean like mine? Like, well, it's like, well, prove, <laughs> like it. Like it. prove it, all right? <laughs> um, and, you know, these, it turns out these are limited edition. They're limited to 500 and um, there was no guarantee that there would be any left for BlizzCon. So, I mean, I think there are still a few left, so I'm letting you know about them now. I'm doing a good shilling job on this, actually. You're doing if you want to go out and you want to buy these, you can do it online, I think, from the from the BlizzCon kind of on online store. But your number will not be as good as mine. Your number will not be as low as mine, because, you know, I got in really, really early. And we all know with limited edition stuff, with numbered stuff, the lower the number, the better, right? That's mm -hmm. how it works. That's oh, yeah. uh, incontrovertible. Oh, yeah. um, exactly. And uh, that's, that's definitely how it works with this. Some people will know this already. Many of you won't. Guess what number my limited edition Grom Hellscreen Chris Metzen 1996 What's the number, Tally? What is the funniest number it could possibly be? I'll give you a clue. It's under 100. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's in the 60s. And I can reveal to you right now that this Grom Hell screen picture is number 68. Wait. It's quite funny. <laughs> number 68. Uh, oh, it's nice. Like, there you are. 68. Which, you know, if anything... I think is even funnier than yeah, what you were it, thinking of. Because it's a very your expectation, right? Yeah, exactly. It's super, it's super funny. Like, it made me laugh. You know, the, the number you all th are thinking of would have been funny. I'm not denying it. But if anything, I think mine is funnier. Because <laughs> you're just like, dude, if, you've been, if you'd been one place behind in the queue. <laughs> uh, and I love it. I love that that is, uh, I love yeah. that that is it. Oh, so good. So good. Um... So yeah, so we were at BlizzCon. BlizzCon was a blast. We had a really good time. Well, I mean, uh, what do you remember about BlizzCon? The entire I, thing I, is a blur I, to it, me, honestly. It was, it was a blur. I remember uh, good vibes. We got away without getting COVID, which was... <laughs> no, I'm genuinely yeah, no, it's like... And it, well, I mean, you'd say that, still touch wood at this stage. It, yeah, I, say, I mean, it could but it still has be been almost like two lingering. Weeks, well, two weeks now. Uh, since we picked up our badges, we yeah. we already had our badges ready to go in two yeah. weeks today. Getting ready for the old uh, um, like uh, wow, uh, Blizz mixer, content creator mixer that we went to in in yeah. some bar where there was no alcohol. No, that was just the vibe. But honestly, that didn't like dampen my experience it at all. Mine a little bit because you know. <laughs> I really love alcohol. Not in a not in a bad no, no. way. And I think in social like, situations, um, people prefer to have the social lubricant of, you know. But the thing is, I actually found having a non-alcoholic cocktail in a can uh was actually quite funny. And it, that was like the thing that was like everyone had a snack or a drink in their hand or whatever, and they were talking to each other. And it was a little bit funny because like <laughs> they were just like it was literally a drink in a can called like 
gamer juice or something. Zero. Game, oh, yeah. Like game zero. Or something. Game till you yeah. drop. Uh, except you won't drop because of the game zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no dropping here. Um. So that, yeah. So, so I, yeah, all in all, BlizzCon was, was, um, it was great. There are many things that I loved about it. Mm -hmm. um, there, I have, I have feedback that oh. I will share once we get feedback, just about like event planning. Can you tell us about it now? Or, um... Yeah, yeah, of course. I think it was, I think pl planning wise, it was like um, kind of a disaster in a lot of ways. Um, to definitely take a look at um, Dan Olson and uh, his Dark Moon Fair video, which is like just literally about line management at Dark Moon Fair, but that didn't work um, at all. People were you know, didn't get to experience it. I didn't get to go to the Dark Moon Fair. I didn't get a single, like, Velcro pin in an egg. Um, no. Well, no. we barely spent any time actually... Okay, so places we did not go. Yeah. Uh, the Dark Moon Fair, for obvious reasons. And mm -hmm. many of you in the chat will have had the same problems getting into that. Yeah, watch uh, Dan Olson's new video on it, yeah. Folding Ideas, his YouTube channel. Like, it sums it up perfectly. Uh, we didn't even set foot in the Hilton no we didn't we didn't it was wild so part of that was us not you know not doing as much con stuff but actually when you were in the con it was uh there was also no seating anywhere there was nowhere to sit there were some designated like seating zones like a kind of like in tavern area but like maybe 50 people could sit there and then it was just like hundreds of people standing around <laughs> trying to look at these big screens while they did announcements because another thing is no one could get into the arena i mean that i didn't expect anyone to get into it but not even press press, oh, press. No. honestly right okay so <laughs> evie did like this proper kind of you know, we were we were like we we saw the opening ceremony from our PCs, right? Uh, from from a streaming PC actually in BlizzCon, um, mm -hmm. because we had a streaming slot for for the opening ceremony, which is amazing. Like, yeah. how cool was that? We couldn't really hear anything, we couldn't really see anything, but no. we saw people, and it was lovely. And we we put it on stream. Obviously, loads of viewers tuned in to hear our horrible sound because mm -hmm. they didn't know that we were going to need two microphones, even though we told. Uh, them many many times and, that and, we were going to need or, two microphones or even or even two oh, even two chairs like you know we yeah, made yeah. sure and that's something you know we'll we'll talk with like our contacts and stuff but we're like you know there are two of us you know we both do this and we both want to sit and we both want to stream and ideally we both want to play um in the end neither of us played because we were just watching the the uh, the cinematic but yeah, and then like the sound was wonky and anyway. So if you've, if you've watched the video, you will you oh, will see you will. that uh, I, I sound like, and just randomly halfway through, I sound great at the beginning and then half, well, I mean, as great as I ever do. And then, and then halfway through, I just, I just start sounding like a robot. Yeah. But not a cool robot. No, like, not like uh, a sexy robot. Yeah, like Stephen Hawking or something. But like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but but just like some weird a robot which is very far like away. Super far away. So and it's extremely upsetting. Um yeah. and and yeah, that is that is a shame, isn't it? Isn't yeah. So kind of like yeah, technical issues, uh, planning issues. Um, uh, uh, like the kind of guilds doing guild clash stuff were absolutely shafted with like. <laughs> You know, t like it's like they're playing on these tiny screens in in the corner, and like everyone was standing around trying to watch them. Um, it was uh, so. I understand. My understanding is that they brought in external people to plan BlizzCon this year, because um, everyone internally who did BlizzCon was let go in the four years. Well, this is the thing, right? <laughs> the, when BlizzCon didn't a, happen. Well, so. it's not even a like. It is like a when BlizzCon didn't happen thing. Of course it is. Yeah. But yeah. that is something that we've had lots of experience of. Don't you remember when we were actually like hosting the q a and stuff yeah and like the uh the producer the stage manager um of the entire show who was calling the entire show making all the lights change and the background screens change and mm -hmm. things like that and he was awesome and he he was doing everything and we were chatting to him just before we went on he was like yeah well you know i don't actually work for blizzard anymore i got let go in like the last round of layoffs yeah. uh but they had no one else to do this mm -hmm. so they asked me to come along and do it and i enjoy doing it so much because like people who work for blizz do people who work for blizz love that stuff um and uh yeah like incredibly upsetting um uh Tally, i thought the video you had to do major adjustments to came out fine okay yeah so that oh, was yeah. uh, that was a whole different uh ball oh, game I, I, yeah. I guess we'll get to that but yeah. then um yeah so we we did the stream and uh we uh then ran to the arena to try and catch the um the what's next panel because mm -hmm. that was like very soon after yeah you, when everyone looked at the 
the schedule for BlizzCon. Do you remember? Everyone was like, wait, there's this weird gap in between yeah. the opening ceremony and the What's Next panel. There's a gap of like an hour. Ooh. What could mm, it be? What could that be? Unannounced survival game? <laughs> WoW 2? Warcraft 4? Starcraft? What's it going to be? How exciting. And then when the actual schedules came out and it turned out that BlizzCon, like the opening ceremony was actually going to be Just two hours. Two hours. Long. And, and it's it like, was long, wasn't it? It was really long. And I, I yeah, so I, I'm sure it would have been really fun to kind of sit in the audience and watch it and stuff. Um, so yeah, so basically I, uh, there, there are just issues with kind of like planning and people management. Again, like Dan covers this in his video really well, but the, having a lack of panels happening um meant that it was really streamlined it's like boom 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 you get all your information pretty quickly um but it also meant that there was nothing for uh nothing for people to do when uh, those panels weren't happening which would have been filled with like voice actor panels and art panels and just meet cool people who do stuff on the game panels yeah um and so it meant that everyone was just roving taking cool selfies with the sword which was fun or trying to get into into or the dark queuing fair. For or queuing and then with the, with yeah the sword. so yeah, like yeah. so the experience of pa so panels were replaced by queues basically um yeah so it was uh so yeah so but that i mean i enjoyed the news i had a good time i had a really good time with you i had a really good time with like all of our friends and fellow creators that we met patrons um you know, nice being in SoCal, seeing the sun for a little bit. Do, so, do you think when when uh, when it comes back next year, mm -hmm. do you think it is uh, something they will do to have panels in all the different halls again? I don't know. I hope so. But if they don't, Liz, please create seating. Seating for people. Well, seating say, for the people. Hold on. Seating for the people. Yeah, seating for the people and seating for press. Like, because, because it's our job to like literally run to different places and panels, sit, focus. Um, we went into the press room. I had, we, you know, we got a free lunch, which was really nice, but the, uh, the actual like screen was just a little screen and the Wi-Fi was really janky. So we were like trying to listen to this thing. Obviously people are talking, they're working, they're like writing articles. So even the, the like the from the press perspective, it, it also didn't feel good. So just just more seats. I just I just want more seats. I just want to know that at some point I will have a guarantee that I can like sit down. But I guess that's what the portal pass was. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Not not even joking. It's like, just we... like seven hundred fifty bucks for some somewhere to sit. Which honestly, Oops, that's the wrong screen. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Whoa. I just clicked the wrong button. Sorry. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Look, I'm still exciting. getting used to this. All right. Yeah. No. 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 We're still setting this up. Live, live production. Um, yeah. So yeah, what what did you what did you think of of BlizzCon Tally? What was uh, your like kind of overall? Right. Well, overall, the initial uh, emotion that I I felt for BlizzCon was relief. Mm -hmm. um like a hundred percent it mm. was just beautiful to be back there it was it felt really really important to uh have it as an event happening and i i, I felt i felt this about um a lot of people have said this this idea that i feel like over bear in mind the last blizzcon was before uh, Shadowlands even launched, and like a year before Shadowlands even launched. The last BlizzCon was the BlizzCon that Shadowlands was announced at, mm. which is wild, absolutely crazy. That's... You were heavily pregnant with our first son. I know, we we, two children. We now. had you zero get in children. A school uniform every day. We had zero to go children. To school. Yeah, I know, it's insane. <laughs> the world insane. has changed, right? Um, yeah. So like, there's that, and um, uh, so there's just been a lot of time, and in that time, Blizzard. Uh, and, and WoW in particular, right? Because that's what we care about, has gone through a, a major crisis mm. of of confidence, of quality, um, and of kind of human rights, <laughs> you know? Um, Oops, and, yeah. and, and it's it's that thing where I, I think probably not coincidentally, the reasons that uh, WoW... Uh, um, blizzcon couldn't happen coincide with the reasons of the game going through a really tough time uh and and uh people's confidence in the game being really low and going to try other things and um yeah yeah and and it it feels like 
all of the feedback, obviously, that we've had on the game and that people working on the game have had on the game and that people making content on the game have been hearing about the game has all come from online voices, mm -hmm. which is fine and brilliant and great, but I kind of had forgotten how refreshing it was every year to meet real people uh, oh, face to face. Um, and, Just you know, best. like a, a biased cross section of people because they're the kind of people that care enough to travel and go to a convention about their favorite video games and mm -hmm. things like that. So, you know, it's not like the average person on the street, but it is the people that care most uh, to a certain degree. Or, you know, it's it's a selection of the people. Yeah, that care people most. who care and who have the resources to come to BlizzCon. Yeah, basically. exactly. And, and um, I did kind of think that it was beautiful to actually kind of just be around people that just like a video game <laughs> oh, you know it's um, the best feeling and exactly yeah yeah and and just are engaging with this thing because it's something they like mm -hmm. and uh that's on the online space that is so unusual because you've got a whole bunch it would be like it would be like kind of sharing your family album just randomly online instead of just like getting it out at Christmas and showing it to people. It's like, obviously, when you get it out at Christmas and show it to people, everyone loves it and everyone cares and everyone's like interested in it and engaged in it because like they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, brilliant photos. Yeah, oh, I remember you when you were that young and stuff like that. And then if you just put it online, obviously, you're going to get a whole bunch of people that don't care and they're just slagging it off and and you know have why would you care what they think but you do mm -hmm. um and and like it was just really nice to be around um just just people who who want to see the best in stuff and not in a kind of a shilly way not in a kind of toxic positivity way but it's like this is a shared interest that we have um and yeah we uh, want to enjoy it and yeah, it's fun yeah, yeah, yeah uh and and which at the end of the day is a video game and like sorry i'm trying to find the yeah. right screen now no. I've, uh... <laughs> the screen's gone yeah but yeah, yeah like uh, um that is at the end of the day a video game that we like to play and we all put our time and money into it uh so we want it to be as good as it can be um but yeah, it, it was really refreshing and I, it's, it's going to sound, I, I've become so terminally online that I'd forgotten <laughs> how, how that feels. Like just to chat with people about WoW um, in a way that wasn't like framed, you know, through or filtered through like Reddit or Twitter <laughs> or like YouTube comments, you know. So, yeah. um, so that was like a, a joy and a pleasure and that will carry me through a, a while um, of just like having a normal headspace <laughs> yeah, yeah. about world of warcraft uh and being able to like critique it and talk about it but not lose could you uh, just, uh, move your monitor down just a, a millimeter or so it's just just catching in the edge of the frame is it yeah yeah hey oh. oh. i really appreciate there that you just uh, you know uh, oh you've put it back up again there. oh is it oh maybe there? yeah Oh, it's not that. Oh, it's no. not your monitor. It's just the edge of the sofa. Forget it. Yeah, Don't worry. Yeah, All good. is good. <laughs> Sorry. Episode one. Still just getting to, to grips oh, yeah, with. A, a few, the, yeah, yeah. It looks sofa. like yeah. a, it looks like a thing in the frame, but yeah. it's not. Sorry. Yeah. You can put your, put your Thanks. monitor Thanks. up as got high a, got as a, you like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I've sorted the different screens now. I think we're good. This is, this is, this is the shared screen and we can switch to, to individual uh, close up uh, screens whenever we want. Yes. So that's awesome yay thank you, thank you uh brilliant so yeah uh bliss and, and what i felt really good to be yeah and and um one of the reasons i've always said that uh, i i really really wanted bellular to go to blizzcon right? mm. um because he's never gone he he before this year he's always invited obviously because he's one of the the biggest wow creators there is and just like we are because we are you know full disclosure as press, we are flown out by Blizzard. Uh, got quite nice seats on the plane this year as yeah, well, didn't lovely. we? Uh, lovely. They book our hotel and stuff. We book uh days either side of the, the days that they book us so we can stick around and see people and, and do the, the live weekly reset and things yeah. like that. Um, but you know, he he never goes previously because 
quite frankly, you can make more videos by staying at home. Do more work. You yeah, know? Stay yeah. on top of things better. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why traditionally he's been able to get out. I, I think the record was 14 videos he managed to get out across the space of two days uh, for BlizzCon 2018 or 17, the oh, BFA wow. yeah, announcement, the, I yeah. think it was. Wow. And it was absolutely wild. And, you know, why wouldn't you do that? No, of and, course. And you wouldn't be able to do that if you're there. And that's something he's always kind of uh, had in the back of his mind, I guess. And I've always said, like, I'd love you to go and just kind kind of you know you just just be there amongst people that love the game and uh it just gives you a different outlook on the entire community and mm -hmm. the entire scene and if you've only ever experienced the community um through youtube and through like twitter and and twitch and stuff then it's 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 not quite the same and like respect to the boy absolutely came this year yeah um and, and, really and really time. came Oh my goodness. <laughs> he, he arrived like a bull in a china shop. It was amazing. Yeah, I saw that guy like three times over the course of the weekend. <laughs> we hung out uh, like uh, for, he came to the live weekly reset yeah, which is great. Uh, and we hung out after that. And that dude was off his twat the whole time. <laughs> That man it, was it, a with, drunk man. No. He was he threw himself into BlizzCon with both feet. <laughs> uh, and and he had a brilliant time. Like I I I think he got like two videos out or something the whole time. He had some pre prepared wow. ones that wow. came out. Yeah. Um and uh because he was just as I hoped he would, throwing himself into the community and meeting people and hanging out and, you know, having photos taken and just like chatting with people and having a great time. And I know he said uh, on, on a tweet um, and, you know, take all his tweets from BlizzCon with a pinch of salt because, you know, wasn't very sober, but he said in a tweet that it has given him a new outlook on, on the community and things. And, and not that he, he needed to improve no, his outlook. That's not no. what I'm saying, but it is just refreshing to have that change, to have that change in outlook. And I, I yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. I, 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 having that is very refreshing. And there are, there are devs who have uh, worked at Blizzard for four years, who have worked on World of Warcraft for four years, mm -hmm. who have never had a BlizzCon, who have never met anyone there, yeah. like who have never met anyone who just yeah. likes the game, who mm -hmm. isn't online mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay, he came in like a wrecking bell. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, this was their first chance to actually get feedback from live people in mm -hmm. the flesh mm -hmm. kind of uh, kind of letting them know that they enjoy their work and things like that and that must be crazy like that yeah. that's wild that people haven't had that uh, and there are loads of kind of dev meet and greets and like dev signings happening throughout as well like those were a little bit harder to find um but yeah so you just you just got to see yeah people who had been working on the game who who made great stuff finally getting to just like interact with um, their audience, like it, you know, really kind of positive, like zone. So, uh, I, yeah, that that about it was was brilliant, and I will, yeah, like I say, I will carry that little feeling with me <laughs> for as long as I can <laughs> until the internet kind of like grinds me under its heel again. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> you give as good as you get on the internet. Yeah, well, to worry about well, yeah, about. exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so so that was BlizzCon, and then we came back. Here we are, and ten point two is here well quite except uh, <laughs> that wasn't quite all i don't want to i don't want to oh, no, keep talking going about this keep going because yeah we've, we've described the incredibly uh satisfying social element of blizzcon mm. uh which it is and that's pretty much all that we did really be uh, apart from the friday friday was our busy work day and so that's the day when we did the live stream in the morning and saw the announcements and not a great way to to watch announcements obviously because uh like i say they they had only originally thought we would need one mic and one head uh, one set of headphones between the two mm -hmm. um effie's mic is cutting out a bit is that is that true oh or is that someone just like uh is I don't that know. someone just giving us nonsense? Anyway, I don't know. Um, and uh, it meant that, Evertel, your entire experience of listening to the announcements happened from a big screen the other side of Hall D, right? Yeah. So I was I was able to hear the announcements uh, coming through the computer, even and, and and that was obviously had a delay on it from the stream because we were just watching the official stream. Yeah. Um, and and seconds. you were getting your announcements echoing across the hall about. 
10 seconds before. Well, <laughs> like, but I what was that like? I couldn't actually hear it because it was just muffled sound and people shouting. Um, and then because there was no sound coming through my headphones either. Um, so we put the um, closed captioning on, like the auto-generated closed captioning. So sorry for anyone who was watching that. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So, so again, not like the best circumstances to like experience. But did you have like that. any uh, kind of impressions of when things were about to get yeah, wild? Yeah, of course, by, of course. Because I, I, I could sometimes hear like cheering and stuff happening. Yeah. And I was like, well, I can't wait to hear what that's about yeah, in ten seconds' exactly. time on the on there, the stream. There would be cheering. There would be like every now and then Chris Metzen's voice would like you know cut through. And but yeah, so I could hear when something Didn't was Chris happening. Didn't Chris Metzen's but I voice what appear in your head like the yeah, voice yeah, of Azeroth? Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. Like, just like just like that. Like yeah. Oh, sorry. Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that was there anything that kind of revealed itself to you? Uh like a big news or whatever that that, that you knew about no. before it happened to us on No, because I couldn't make any of the words out. Oh, ah, what a shame. Anything. Yeah, yeah. So I knew things were coming, but I couldn't actually decipher the content. Sad. Yeah. Sad. Oh well. Oh well. Um and, and, and it meant that kind of our you know, we got the basics of the announcement. Uh, well, I, 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 I think I got the announcement pretty well, but obviously Avatel just had to live off the basics of the announcement. Well, in, in yeah, and the of, closed captioning. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, exactly. Which, which was done live. You know, yeah. it wasn't wasn't great. Just the auto captioning. Um, so, so there was like you know fragmented kind of information coming out there, mm -hmm. and then we had to run to. Uh, well, we, we tried to get into the arena to see the What's Next panel. Yeah, we... um, and w one of the things, there's a, a couple of things that are weird about only having uh, like panels in the arena is that, um, well, one, it, it, it's weird because there's nothing else happening in any of the other halls. Mm. You have screens which are there ostensibly for people to watch the panels on, but like Effie said, there's no real seating or anything. You know, there's some kind of beanbag areas and things like that. No one wants to sit in those beanbags, man. No, and, and like well, I'm well, not touching a beanbag. Well, and you wouldn't at a be able convention. to anyway because like they are <laughs> they are occupied by people who have been there since first thing in the morning, right? So you're not gonna. There's nowhere to kind of do it. You kind of hang around outside, and. Um, the, the second thing that that does is it means like everyone in every hall is just wandering about looking for something to do. Yeah. Whereas before there were panels happening in every hall. So that is actually really good at kind of just taking out like a third of the people in that hall yeah. and putting them in just one place giving them something and sitting them down. Yeah. And, and like and a, the, a panel that is like ch your chosen flavor, like your yeah, chosen exactly. game something and the thing really, that really you're interested in. Whereas exactly. now it was like, one location for all of the announcements mm -hmm. for every IP and every game and like it's a really long way to get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah. so, so you so all those people, which is like a third of the population of each hall, who would usually have uh been, you know, sitting down watching a cool panel, were instead wandering around like, looking for anything to do. And so, yeah. you know, they can't get into the Dark Moon Fair because like a five hour queue there. There's a huge queue to go and have your photo taken with the sword and stuff like that. Um, so a a kind of knock-on effect that that had was that any content creators walking on anyone with even like i would like we're not z list fame we're like whatever alphabet has more letters than our alphabet the last letter of that alphabet we're, we're like that omega, level of fame like right? omega yeah, list. yeah i yeah. know but <laughs> what that means is that yeah there's more it's harder and i this this is the same for everyone that i spoke to it's harder for content creators to get anywhere because you always get stopped and asked for photos and, and to say hello to people and to mm -hmm. just chat and stuff and it's brilliant it's oh, like yeah. the best thing mm -hmm. about blizzcon it's, it's awesome but it was and it was still awesome it was not any less awesome but it was constant and if yeah. you if you stopped to talk to someone there would be like a queue a queue would form by spontaneously the time, by the time you people queue got formation. nothing else to do in that hall yeah, except yeah, queue yeah, yeah. right it's like oh, i can't i can't it's pointless joining the queue to get into the sword i cut like this the queue to get in dark moon fair is like horrendous oh there's a small queue to talk to talies never tell kind of hate those guys but it's something to do right something to do. i was like oh so so another so another thing we did was um we did a, a meet and greet we oh did I'm, like try, a, I'm trying to do this in like a, oh like, so that we like, i'm trying to do this in kind some kind of like okay uh, i see order okay. Of how it happens so okay we okay no i see i see what you're okay. doing keep going but keep like, going yeah, then. um so so well, I, obviously every single person we met it was brilliant please think don't think that i wish we hadn't met you or anything like that it was incredible and, and yeah. you know it, it was, like i so love good. it it's so the best good. thing ever um and but it did mean that it took us 
much much longer to get anywhere um and i think it was the same for most content creators uh, the only the only people that could get anywhere they wanted to super fast mm -hmm. was that k-pop band oh my gosh we were like literally shoved out of the way as they came through I, i'd gotten i gotten myself a bubble tea and they were like out of the way and i was like oh my god we, we saw well they're bodyguards they did yeah yeah the bodyguards they, they, like, they, they, their wrists know. were tiny they would not have been able yeah, to push they didn't you out actually the way, push me like, the way but like the momentum of them walking through the yeah exactly just, like, but we, it was everyone. so funny because you could see them coming from like two halls away. Like, there was like oh, this commotion wow. kind of going on <laughs> the, and, like, the crowd parting like the sea yeah yeah and just like these huge dudes with glasses like and then these beautiful 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 elfin kind of like uh, well because i didn't even clock who they were and i was like, yeah, no, I was like I, are they like are they like an overwatch team yeah. or do you know what i mean no it's like oh i guess it's like one of the overwatch teams in the arena. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um so we got to the arena just before the what's next started just in time to be uh, told obviously there was no room in the arena and evie was all like yo yo i think there is for press yeah and, and i was like, like I bet there, there <laughs> must be, there must be. And then we, you know. And they're like, only press seats available for the opening ceremony. Yeah. So, so like after that, press seats was, were just like, they didn't exist, yeah. which is good for everyone else, She's bad great. for anyone who wanted to cover any of the, any, any of the events. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to run up to the uh, the press section mm -hmm. and the, the internet in the press section was dodgy AF. Like the stream was worse it than was this It was rubbish. Stream. It was only being shown on one small TV and the other TVs were showing other stuff. And uh, and it was just like 10 of us standing, eating wraps <laughs> from a box, like trying to listen to this, um, which was which was uh, a challenge. It was hard. It was hard. Yeah. So uh, we, we kind of got a fragmented version of the What's Next panel then. Yeah. And then literally one minute after the What's Next panel finished, we had to be in the interview suites to interview uh, Taryn Gregory and Frank. You say the name so much better than me. Kowalkowski. Kowalkowski. But I mean, like the Polish pronunciation would be like Kowalkowski. Ko Kowalkowski. Yes. But like, My but like, Polish pronunciation but, is but on like, point. But as uh, he, he strikes me as like an American. So I don't know how he, I don't know his choice pronunciation. But probably I, I feel like a, a couple of generations ago, his his ancestors decided to change it to Kowski rather than Kowski, right? Well, you you just it's or, just or society decided to change it. You for know, him, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just it's just how they're. Pronounced, but he is he's right? one of your peoples, right? Uh, but presumably well, a, a Polish American. He's both of your people. Pre presumably, yeah. Awesome. Um. So yeah. So so we had to run to an interview with them, Im like literally immediately following like instantly following that panel and we we're as we were going we we're like what are we what qu what are we gonna ask them <laughs> What are we gonna talk about? And then, um, yeah, exactly. We hadn't really heard much of the What's Next panel, so and like, the like, stuff we had learned, we were like, "Wow, brilliant!" And then wow. we think all these questions off the top of our head, yeah. and that's why you'll see it on the second channel. The interview isn't great. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's fine for for what it is because I'm really glad you gave it context on the video mm -hmm. because without it, people would be like, "This is a rubbish interview." But once you know that it's in a moment in time, oh, so you accept that people would have thought it was a rubbish uh, interview if well, I hadn't given it context. Published like days <laughs> later, yeah, yeah. Because it's like, wait, we know all this stuff already. So, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, so that was another another little challenge. And then we just had enough time to go and take all of our stuff back to the hotel room. Yeah. And then we went to our meet and greet. Yes. So we, which we had been promised was going to be on a Saturday when we agreed to do it. Yeah. And so then they're like, oh no, it's uh it's on a Sunday. And oh, sorry, it's on the it's on, it's on the first day. It's on the Friday. And uh, yeah, you just gotta yeah just or Saturday, whatever. The first day, it was, yeah, it was then uh, that we ran to it. And that was cool because we were like, uh, you know, no con before the storm this year. No kind of big unofficial community event happened this year, which was a real shame, but totally understandable given like late notice, um, like it being announced very late and uh, not having time to kind of, you know, come together basically. So we were like, yeah, okay, let's do, um, Let's let's do it. Let's do the official the official meet and greet. Um, Sorry, I just want to jump into this. Is it a super chat? Is that what they call it on you on YouTube? Oh, Nolgar, thank super you. Super chat from Nolgar. Uh, yeah, why didn't they give us a, a live feed? I don't know. I don't know. So Instead, that, that, more, that would have been like the obvious thing yeah, to do, right? Yeah. So more um, more questions for 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 the, going on my feedback form. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, so uh so so we yeah sorry meet and greet yeah meet and greet uh and we were really excited right so it was like it was us it was preach it was fandy um bajira 
uh, and Platinum. Yeah, and uh, we had met Platinum the day before. Yeah, we were like, oh, in, cool. Uh, and we met so many good people at the, the WoW Mixer, yeah. who, who I all remember perfectly because, of course, there was no alcohol there. Exactly. Um, and it was it was brilliant. We met. Uh, like, I'm not going to list names and stuff because there were just basically every WoW content creator uh, was there, and it was it was awesome. It yeah. was so so cool yeah. to just like see people in the flesh. And what was really striking to me about the mixer and then later the uh, meet and greet and kind of general social gatherings like that mm -hmm. was how last time we were at blizzcon obviously we uh hosted the q a and we felt like that was our blizzcon right we were made to feel so important we got like chaperoned everywhere we were backstage you know we had the live weekly reset for the first time oh, that yeah. year and stuff like that and it just felt like yeah this is great we're mm -hmm. having a, a this is you know we felt really really in the center of everything which was great before that we'd always been kind of you know the the fresh young things in the yeah, content lower key, creator theme like, and stuff yeah. like that yeah we, we were meeting devs for the first time and stuff it's like our first couple of blizzcons and what mm -hmm. have you and in the four years since obviously it's been really cool because you've had like all of these new content creators oh, come through so like many. genuine young people yeah. who, <laughs> who are like genuinely folks. cool and uh genuinely sort of enthusiastic about wow in a way that you yeah. know jaded old farts like us kind of uh aren't naturally maybe i don't know um and it was it was beautiful it was so nice to see and people that we follow obviously and that we mm. watch like okay mage um and a million other people and yeah. platinum right yeah um and uh like so nice to see this new generation of wow content creators sort of uh making themselves known yeah and and Love that. kind of arriving on the scene and bringing a younger audience into the game as well that's always something i, I yeah. say is that you know people talk about oh no young people play wow no new players are coming to the game and how can we make it better for them and stuff and it's like there are loads of young players playing this game there are young players uh, you know they don't they don't pick it up at, at the same rate that they might pick up call of duty or like Fortnite or like you know whatever but they're there and there's there's a a, a constant steady stream of young players particularly in the mm. last few years actually well a yeah. because like young players are so much more notable now because we're so old but also the fact that um we're just getting to the kind of age where people that started playing wow 20 years ago have got literal teenage children now yeah. who are picking up the game as well if, the, if their parents are still playing it right yeah. And um, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's so wild like i mean I, kind of a tangent but the same same point like we, i was talking with our sister-in-law recently and we were just uh, you know catching up about going to california and stuff and she was like oh you know i love all that stuff she's like it was always my dream to go to america and you know i grew up watching youtube and i was like you grew up what <laughs> i had to like stop and i like <laughs> had to like compute and i'm like i remember youtube coming out when i was in college yeah. and watching it and she was like you know i grew up on x y and z on youtube and i was like yeah that's different <laughs> That's, yeah. uh, that's different and then yeah there are people who are like playing wow with their kids there are people who are like learning about wow through social media and youtube in a way that they never would have before because you wouldn't have you wouldn't have gone on to the you know forums mm. and then been like oh now i'm gonna play wow although to be fair i did learn about world of warcraft through my friend's live journal I'm posting her Torin oh, screenshot. Sorry, I'm just stuck in this time machine right now. Like, yeah. I am in a time <laughs> capsule right now. I feel yeah. like, wow, my goodness. I need to, I, well, my hair is already side parted. I have an old haircut. But yeah, I feel like I need to change into like, I need to grow my, my uh, sideburns a little bit and get them all spiky around my chin. Yeah. I need to like, yeah, I need to get my, my yeah. 2000s clothes really on right crazy. here. This is amazing. So yeah, so anyway, like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's super, it's super interesting seeing the landscape of wow, like consumers and creators change and so we met platinum but we platinum only Platinum is like we only 18 <laughs> yeah. a model yeah. probably in a band yeah that dude is definitely in a ska punk band. Oh, like uh, do not <laughs> ska punk ska punk is maybe no, he, a bit he definitely is in a dub band <laughs> a dub right yeah dub yeah i don't know probably um and the only reason we recognized him is because he, he literally had his like avatar his little icon printed mm -hmm. on his name tag and we we're like oh platinum and then we got to chat and stuff so we did so that's the 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 um kind of uh, party we had the night before and then yeah. at the meet and greet it was just us up there and the format again feedback was <laughs> really <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, ever tells real name is karen and uh... <laughs> um 
<laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, it, it it was just like so. Uh, there was a there was a there was a, a row of us sitting in these chairs, um, and uh, then uh, there was a big queue of people, and there they. I still don't hundred percent understand how it worked. They would let in one or two people at a time, and then I think the idea was like you kind of go to the creator you want to see the most maybe um and if some of them are next to each other maybe you can get to talk to two of them uh rules seem to be like no talk like very minimal they were talking. very strict rules. they were extremely so I- strict and they were like um uh you get a signature or you get a selfie not both don't if someone started being like hey i th- really nice to meet you i've been watching you guys a massive security guard would step in and be like move along and uh who was a really sweet guy he was he was just like he was doing his job and he was doing a really good good job of what he was told to do and we kind of joked about it with him but it made for like a horrible experience for people being like shoved through this like conveyor belt of like a one signature no not a signature and a selfie some people snuck both some people like me- some people did like here's a little bracelet and like, then we're just like shoved shoved away and then we're forced to kind of like not say hi to some other creators or like maybe did or maybe we're just so that was like a very strange you know it was a joy to talk to everyone we could as, as quickly as we could <laughs> Because they're literally like five seconds, next person. Um, Yeah, I think the problem there is that basically we are just like YouTube podcasters. Uh, Today we are. Oh, we are. Today we are. YouTube podcasters. How do you feel? Is it nice? Nice new (laughs) career path? No, we're basically just YouTubers, right? Um, And, you know, Preach is is very famous, but it's basically just a YouTuber. And, 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 like, Bajira is super famous, but he's just a YouTuber and streamer, right? And I think the problem was that the line had been set up as if we were Mariah Carey, right? Yeah, as if everyone there was some kind of, And they were going by rules, or like for, K-pop that stars, had been, right? yeah, that, that had been developed for people much more famous than us. Yeah. So there is that thing of like, yeah, you have to, you can have a photo with one person, you mm-hmm. can get signed by one person, it can't be the same person. Exactly. Like, and 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 yeah, if you lingered, the dude was like, whoa, 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 keep it moving, keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like, it was, it was really not, it was a bit upsetting, honestly. Yeah, because it, it, it went so, yeah. It, yeah, it so and I felt really sorry for anyone that had to go through that just to meet us. But there is also the awkward thing. And like every time they were getting like harried through or whatever, we were like, I'm really, I'm really sorry about this. This kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm just very sorry. And the dude, the, the, the security guy actually came up to us and was like, he's hey like, man, I'm like, not a bad dude. He's like, I'm just doing my job. And we were yeah, like, yeah, we were like we, yeah, no, yeah, no, but, I get, no, like, absolutely. I get you're doing your job, but we have to say that to them because yeah. it, makes, it makes people feel better that they understand that yeah. it's not us that's harrying yeah, them. Yeah, and we're right? like, no, no, no. <laughs> as you may know, like we love, we like, we love stopping and chatting with everyone and like it's, genuinely just the best part like actually getting to talk to people well and and the thing is it's not actually very good for us because all that happened was at the end of the meet and greet we just spent an hour meeting everyone that we hadn't been able to meet and 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 re-meeting people that got hurried through so we we literally after the meet and greet we just jumped over the barrier and just started another it, it was initially like, just to talk to like a couple of people and then a queue formed and we were there for another hour like longer than the actual meet and greet yeah, was kind of meeting people just, which was brilliant um but kind of maybe we could have just fitted all that into the meet and greet yeah I don't know. exactly exactly <laughs> and this isn't to say like oh it, we just had so many people it was more like we just wanted to give the few people who did come like yeah, exactly. a proper amount of time and like respect for them as well you know yeah, yeah. and so we so you know that was the, it was a shit show it was yeah, yeah. it was actually um but then the funniest thing happened speaking of like queuing dynamics and conventions like so you know we're we're doing the after the meet and greet queue which was like literally right ne- oh sorry literally right next to where the meet and greet was like literally just behind it so it was very odd very odd um but then people were kind of like lining up and we got to like properly chat with people and take some photos <laughs> and then a guy came up oh this will, i will never forget this he came up and he was like kind of nervous and we were like oh okay cool and i was like hey how's it going and he was like yeah um so what do you guys do and we were like oh um yeah uh and i was like i'm an astronaut and this is tally he- like the definition of a dude that had just seen a Q and joined it <laughs> and and so we were kind of like making a bit of a joke about it and he was like oh yeah um cool 
uh, right. And I was like, no, 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 we make, we make videos about World of Warcraft. And he was like, oh yeah. Um, and he clearly did not want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and like, so weird. And, and we like... were just like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, okay, cool. And he was like, uh, clearly did not want to talk to us. Then he was like, well, can I get a photo? And we were like, why? <laughs> and it's like, it was, it was, it was like, there's like 20 people in the queue behind you. Like, we should have gone like half an hour ago. I it's know. like, we'd love to just speak to just, people that want to be there. And it was so it was funny. So and like, funny. no shade to him, but he clearly just like, he's well, a little like, bit of shade. Maybe a little me. bit, a little, a little bit, bit. A little bit. You could have just been like, oh, okay, whatever. See ya. You know, like, but it was really funny. And then he was like, and then we took a photo. This kind of like, uh, <laughs> like, well, I think the face I pulled. I think I think the face I pulled actually uh, was. <laughs> Which do you know what? I'd imagine is probably a similar face to what he's got on a lot of his photos. If that's how he approached the, yeah. <laughs> the convention. But like the it's the same, like, yeah, yeah. It is a thing where you know if you are wandering around just looking for stuff to do because mm -hmm. there's not many panels totally. on. If, if the panel that is on the one panel that is on at a time is not a panel you're interested in, then there is a lot. It, there it was felt a lot more aimless this year. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Con. So there was a thing where people would see a queue. And they would join it. And if it was something they wanted to do when they got to the end, awesome. If not, totally. awkward photo time, I yeah, guess. If not, yeah, exactly. And uh, and so, yeah, <laughs> so he was totally just a victim of, I said, just like poor planning and, yeah, these like spontaneous cues that formed and stuff. And, you know, it was just really funny how it played out. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> cool. cool. Um, um, and, and that was the end of our work at BlizzCon. Uh, that was that was all well, well, apart well. from okay. So yeah, well, another funny thing that happened <laughs> was uh, we got really, really lucky. Um, we do the live weekly reset uh, every year. That's like a staple now. Presumably, everyone watching this knows the weekly reset. It's our it's our it's a, weekly show, our news weekly show, show about WoW, uh, and it's it's scripted and. Um, Last BlizzCon, we did a live version of it in front of about, I think we got about 80 people in the room in the end, which is really, really good. Like we just yeah. booked a little room, um, a little convention like room and at the like Hilton. Squeezed a few yeah, in. exactly. And we did it live and it was incredibly stressful to write a script in a few hours, but I did it. And we had like a cool little yeah. kind of, uh, and you know, lots to talk about because Shadowlands had just been announced and it was all the amazing cool things that make the game really good after the disappointing BFA, right? I was like, yeah, no, yeah. it's going to be amazing. And, uh, and but that being the first year that we'd done the weekly reset live i didn't know if i was gonna be able to write a script and i was like oh, i don't mm -hmm. know if i'm gonna be able to write any jokes i don't know practice. if i'm just gonna have complete writer's block and you know working yeah. on a deadline of you know in a few hours there's an audience gonna be in that room waiting for it i thought probably best to have a backup plan as well. So if the script is really short, there's still something to put in the video and still something for people to see if they're staying later at BlizzCon to see this show and everything. And um, so we had this idea of a round table and we got some cool people into the round table, mm -hmm. like uh, Patrick Beja was at the round table yeah. and Peculiar from Wowhead was at the mm -hmm. round, round table. And it was like a little podcast set up on, yeah. a, on a table and we talked about it and it was really, really Loved good. It. Fantastic. It. And so we thought we'd better do the same this year, just in case mm -hmm. can't write a script. As it happens, the script that I wrote was 35 minutes was, this year. And I, th it was brilliant. It, it was, was a very so good, good. It was, was a really, really good, it. really funny. Yeah. I would not want to do it at a non- expansion reveal BlizzCon, no, put it that way no. well maybe well, here, well, that would be next BlizzCon so we'll see right um and um we were thinking about who we want to get on the round table and Evie was like who is your ideal guest list yeah for uh the round table and we got everyone we wanted I was like well peculiar because she's awesome and brilliant and will be a guest on this show in the very near future because uh, we want to have guests on this show this is like episode one so we're just feeling our way in yeah but i think it'd be really easy to get guests involved and and especially Absolutely. with this setup just like, i've just set up little, now little box on yeah the screen. exactly and like um uh we and she was like yeah and i was like okay well um did you just upload a video midstream? Oh yeah, I scheduled a video on the oh, second channel. Yeah, if you follow our second <laughs> channel, there's a new video on the second channel literally right now. Yeah, nice. good spot. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good advert. Um, I can't even remember what the video is or what it's called, but it's there. It's scheduled. It's live. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> I know this is this is us. Like, is this what they call a passive income? I don't know. No, no nothing <laughs> um, about this is passive. And like, oh uh, yeah, very true. And um, 
you know, I was like, I want Peculiar. Mm -hmm. Soul would be really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Soul so breezy. Uh, I'd like Belly La as well, if mm -hmm. he's about, but I don't know if he's going to be about. Uh, and at that point, we did know Belly La was going to BlizzCon, yeah. but we, he hadn't announced it. No, he hadn't said he hadn't anything. It, which made me think he was going to be hosting the uh, the uh, WoW Q&A. We hadn't heard anything about the WoW Q&A, but I was like, right, we haven't heard about the WoW Q&A yet. We know Belly La is going to be at uh, BlizzCon, but he hasn't announced it uh, mm -hmm. on his Twitter or anything. So those two, th why are they both being secret? The WoW Q&A yeah. and Belly are being on? a secret. And it turned out I was completely wrong, obviously. Yeah. There was no WoW Q&A. That's why they hadn't mentioned it. And <laughs> Bell hadn't mentioned BlizzCon because his full intention was to go there, not make any videos and just drink and have fun, which is exactly what you should do. Um, and awesome. So, but I knew Belly was going to be there. So I was like, I'd love to get Bell and complete like shot like pie in the sky blue hat thinking mm -hmm. absolute best case scenario <laughs> blue hat thinking yeah yeah i, I, I used to work in the corporate world <laughs> blue hat i don't know blue remember. sky thinking blue. you've heard that right i know but you said blue sky yeah but why would you do your blue sky thinking without wearing your blue hat yeah okay i get i get you so, what, well, who what, was color, your, what, what other color hat would you put on your, to do your blue sky your, thinking your blue blue hat yeah, Choice, I'm putting telling. on my blue hat to do my it? blue sky thinking. Was Dan Olsen of Folding Ideas, uh -huh. my favorite YouTuber mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. and also uh, a big, big WoW fan. He's made two WoW videos in the past mm -hmm. and, and they're both some of the best WoW videos on the internet. And we were like, well, Dan Olsen's like incredibly famous. <laughs> He's got as many subs as like all of the people I just mentioned put together. Mm -hmm. His videos get like millions of views. Um, and, you know, we don't know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unlike no, those other people yeah. I just listed. Yeah. So we just sent him an email and we were like, yeah, you know, we know, we were thinking that there's probably a greater than 0% chance that you will be at BlizzCon. And if you are, would you like to come to the Weekly Reset Live? And would you like to be on the round table? And he got back to us like pretty quickly and was yeah. like, hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, which was we amazing. Like, so that oh. was great. And, and we were like, wow. And we hung out with him loads uh, while he was there. We oh, got dinner on the Friday night, but we got dinner on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. And we were so excited because we were like, we're going to have dinner with Dan Olsen. We're just going to hang out with Dan Olsen. And actually Mego, uh, who made this incredible uh, animation, which is mm -hmm. playing behind us right now, we bumped into her and Megan, her girlfriend, and we just invited them as well. And we just all went for dinner together. And it was just brilliant. And we yep. just sat there. Uh, one of the reasons we didn't get to the Hilton the entire time no, uh, we no. were at BlizzCon was because like we were just having cool dinner. With, we were talking about crowd control at the Yeah, Dark yeah, Bear. exactly. <laughs> and it was just like a really, really great time. And, uh, but... You know, we had organized to meet Dan Olsen at the end of our meet and greet. Yeah. So we could go to dinner. And so he arrived at the end of our meet and greet. But then we were just meeting people yeah. and taking photos for an hour after that. Oh and he was just standing there waiting for us to finish this like impromptu meet and greet that had just formed at the end. To the extent that because he was standing by us and people were coming up and saying hello and wanting photos and stuff. He kept being like. Yeah, I'll and take the photo. Bless him. He he literally, and, and it's not like it was forced on him. He was literally, he would be like, no, oh, no. hey. He was like, hey, do you want me to take a photo? And I was like, oh my God, this is humiliating. I was like, please taking, stop it. He's like stop. our photographer taking yeah. selfies he's of us and like people. Selfies. At it was and like, you know, I was like, please God, don't, no, he, don't do this. He's a professional. Please. Man went to film school. He's a proper, like, talking, I bet those proper photos documentarian. are amazing. And so he was yeah. like lining up the angles and stuff. And um, it was it was it was hilarious but also like it just he's it's a, such like a generous spirit and such a lovely person and it was uh kind of incredible how that panned out um, but still sorry dan for <laughs> making you take photos of us for like an hour and so if you have seen the weekly reset live he is on the uh round table at the end and it's and th th that was the other thing we did right yeah. so then uh we had the saturday which is a much more chill day and then um, uh saturday evening we met up with uh some uh we met with christy golden and we did uh, um and Andrew Russell, voice Andrew of Russell, Caligos, voice of Caligos uh, and Anne Stickney, who's on the Quest team and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, like yeah, it's, it's been just, an it was... amazing uh, kind of group of people. But chatting. it gets to the stage where you're like, okay, I'd love to just stay here hanging out, having a nice time, but I have to go and write the weekly reset. Yeah, it's like we gotta go. I actually, I was a little bit salty about that because I was like. I'm going to put my going out clothes on. <laughs> and I was like, I got like changed and I was like, I'm ready. I'm wearing like my mesh top and I am. <laughs> you did look incredibly And sexy. I was like, I'm wearing my leather pants 
it's going out time and it's like 6 p.m and telly's like um we should go up because we got to work on this and i was like you could have stayed no 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 i couldn't no i had to be there in case you worked yourself into a frenzy and okay passed out. so some people know this uh <laughs> most of you watching this won't i guess but um the first like i say the first year we did the like weekly reset live was the last blizzcon right 2019 yeah. and we'd never done it before and yeah the idea of kind of coming back in the saturday evening and writing a whole script for a weekly reset because it is all scripted with a, and it's the jokes man because you can't force jokes with writing you can force it you know, you're always like, I can force myself to write something. It might not be good, but it'll be finished. Mm -hmm. You can't write, you can't force jokes. No. Like if they don't come, they don't come, you know, as the actress said to the bishop. And it's, it, it is kind of like, yeah, it's hard. And th there was a point at about 1 a.m., maybe midnight on the Saturday night in 2019, mm -hmm. where I got so stressed writing this script that I passed out on the floor L of the hotel room. Literally passed out on the floor. And I thought he was just being a little bit dramatic because, you know, sometimes he can be a little bit dramatic. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you okay. talking about? <laughs> um, but like... Then I was like, okay, okay, babe, listen, this is fine. And I was like trying to wake him up and he was not responding and not waking up. Do you and know I'm, why? It's because I was in a fugue state where the jokes were coming to me. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I, like I, had, I had reached my final form. I was like, there's no jokes in this script. I need to, and I transformed and I went into the joke dimension. So obviously I was just on the floor. Like, uh, 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 and, but, but I was working as like some kind of, uh, you know, like a conduit. Like, yeah, conduit. Yeah, yeah, I was basically, <laughs> yeah, I was, or, like I was Ouroboros. I was, yeah. I was the arbiter and like the jokes were flowing through me and I woke up and, and lo, the script was done. <laughs> no, it's um, hours no. left. <laughs> um, and and yeah, and uh, and it, you know, I was like five months pregnant, and literally the first thought that came to my mind was like, oh my god, he's dead, and uh, I'm gonna have to raise this baby by myself. <laughs> it, went, it was it was it was horrible in the moment. It's funny now. So like, I called um, security. I called up to the front desk to send a, like a doctor up. Like I was like, help! I think my husband is dead. <laughs> On, he's on the floor and like a man came up and like checked you out and yeah and then he Dude, and then he and then he and then he checked me out and everywhere exactly, i go exactly. and then he and then he gave you a once over and then he, and then he that's checked, all i needed yeah and, you then he, done that. and then he checked your um he, you know checked your like vitals and stuff and you were still out you were literally out and i think they must have thought that you were like drunk or something because and you weren't you weren't no, at all it was not and um and i don't get drunk on but the they clearly saw that. that you were alive and i was like a little bit hysterical but you know they told me it would be okay and to just like see if you wake up and then you know call back if there's any other issues and you and then you woke up and you literally when you woke up you're like and then you just like walked over and just started like doing more writing I was like, out of the way i gotta and you're like okay <laughs> it's like, i have been the, the dad jokes have been bestowed upon me in my fugue state and i'm ready to go <laughs> And um yeah, so and then and then it was and then it all worked out fine. And um but so anyway, I was I was like I was like that did not happen this year. Please. <laughs> I don't I, I It don't was actually an incredible like I was up until three AM yeah. writing. Uh and, but you know, so that's late. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you don't want it to be that late, yeah. obviously. But all in all, it was uh, a very chill writing experience. Yeah, you were like in the yeah. groove. And that's the thing when you were like, okay, it's time to go. I got to I gotta write this. I could tell that you were just like ready to just mm -hmm. get into it and do it. And so uh, so that happened. And then, you know, it was it was ready. It was written for the yeah. next day. Ta-da. Yeah. And I, I thought there were some good jokes in there as there well. There were some very, very good jokes. And, you know, Dan Olsen was the star of the show, obviously. But the best part of the show was when I saw uh belila walk through that door uh because it like we obviously we had contacted belila uh because he was on our dream list of, of people yeah. in the round table and he was like yo uh i don't really want to be on the round table because that's work and that's not really what i'm doing yeah <laughs> uh but i would love to come and be in the audience and it was like yeah awesome just as good honestly uh and and so it was that thing of like you know lots of people say they might come and sometimes they don't and mm -hmm. things like, although we had loads of awesome create like the audience is mostly patrons mm -hmm. because we we put the tickets out to them first obviously you can be on our patreon for a dollar a month by the way you can give more if you want but you get mm -hmm. everything for a dollar there's no tears get all the good. that's the biggest sell i've ever done on the patreon yeah you have wow you, um you and 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 um, 
so all the tickets go to them first. We had like like Evie says about sixty or eighty tickets that went out last time, and they went instantly. Um, and yeah. we keep you know seats aside for just general just, space, yeah. and also to fit people in people we that we, and... we invite beyond that. Um, so this year we were like, well, I'd rather get a room that is twice the size that is half empty. Yeah. Um and and exactly. not have anyone that we can't let in, you know. So we got a room that was twice the size. It was pretty expensive. Thanks patrons. Um and uh you know, so I think we had like 140 people in there at the end, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um and uh, again, all of our tickets were taken by patrons. Um and uh we, we you know, we we reserved like 10, 20 for for invite kind yeah. of people of Other which people Bell was one and, and, and for the round table people yeah. and their guests and stuff. Uh so yeah, I mean I think that's feasibly the biggest room we can do, unfortunately, like for budget and things like that. Because at that stage, we had to rent like a PA system so people in the hall could hear. Yeah. Um, so that's why there's a slight echo, which I quite like on the video, actually. It, it makes a little, it feel little live. Yeah. yeah. Feels yeah. live, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So, uh, so that was, saw, sorry, yeah. I just yeah. going back to the story. I just remembered um, and see Belial come into the room and take his place on the front row where we'd reserved him a seat. Yeah. It was like, ah, oh, good. Now I can do the Bellular jokes. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have done them if he hadn't no, been exactly, there. It would have been, exactly. like it's it's only funny if you know he's there. Yeah. Uh, and he's and laughing it's, along. Because like, there's, there's no chance of anyone thinking it's exactly. actually like beef or anything like and that. It's still so funny when you get people being like, oh my God. Tally, Tally, and, Tally and Bell, like just, just, oh my God, they, they just hate each other hate so much. Each other. They and hate I have each to other pick a side. so much. And I have to pick one. And I have to be the white knight for one of them. <laughs> and I have to slay the other one. And it's yeah, like, totally. No, and like, I will slay just... them by telling them they're dumb on Twitter. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, so it, we had a really good time and uh, oh, loved doing that. The, the the jokes were great. His reaction was like, he was a, loving a it. He was loving it every he second he was there. Yeah, he just loved every, and like, and people there were like chatting him up yeah, and like you yeah. know and he was like checking our like equipment and it was, it was just yeah it was and we oh we had some great chats and we hung out afterwards in the bar like until late as well and yeah. he just was a man who was loving his time at blizzcon mm -hmm. it was fantastic mm -hmm. and it was just really good to see him having such a good time as well I mean, we've met him loads of times at like preach con and stuff like that so um you know we we're, we know each other pretty well and we're, we're quite friendly in that sense so, and that goes like way back yeah That's way like, back my goodness so, like 2017 2017 stuff, yeah. yeah i think yeah pre preach brought us together to film like the, the, i wonder if that's christmas still on the internet video yeah a christmas yeah. cooking from the warcraft book the cooking book uh for christmas uh that was the first time we met and him, noble yeah. was there and the the, uh, the the dudes were there uh the fat boss guys yeah the fat yeah, boss yeah. guys were there um <laughs> yeah wow different times yeah good times yeah great times <laughs> um um, but yeah. and yeah, that was the first time we met Preach and Bell and stuff. And then then Preach Con became a thing that happened every yeah. year, and yeah. we we got invited to that a lot. So uh, we, I actually flew to Preach Con direct from our honeymoon. I did not <laughs> our mini moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was but like, I, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time. Yeah, it's nice. And Bell's always having a good time at that as well, which is why I knew he'd have a good time at BlizzCon. Why I was always like so keen for him to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you to everyone who came to the weekly reset live. I think the show turned out really 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 well mm -hmm. really happy with it um it felt really if, good if i could somehow do the weekly reset live every episode it, yeah it, it was like even slightly feasible when we lived in london i know it was, do you it remember? was do you remember? marginally feasible after when... our first one we were like oh wow let's just rent out a pub yeah. let's just do a little every live Saturday show night and, oh, like, every sunday and do it and, and just like it. do our little show there and like it'll be you know and, this and was before know children before if COVID everything COVID hadn't happened yeah. we might have even done it yeah because we were so hyped after coming back in 2019 yeah. we were like, like yeah yeah we that was so good and we, were, yeah. we were like yeah the weekly reset just works so well with an yeah. audience that's the kind of show it is that's what it needs to be yeah and we can do it we can have a regular thing in a pub in london and yeah. people would come like we'd people get 50 just people come, a week, yeah you know just coming to watch it and record and stuff yeah um and it would be worth the the outlay it'd be worth the cost and stuff um there are loads of like then, gaming obviously the, gaming the entire world stuff, shut yeah. down yeah so yeah we've done pub quizzes we did an overwatch yeah, pub quiz, pub quizzes like, before. In, yeah, in, yeah. In, again in london like just just super yeah but in the before times <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? uh, so so and then we moved to uh we moved to swansea so yeah, i never. don't think it would be a feasible thing to never do from swansea i don't really want to 
travel to London from here to do it no, every week. So no. it was an idea that could have even happened. And if there was ever a way we could find to make a live weekly reset happen every week, I would happily do it. Or at least yeah. like once a month or something yeah. like that. I, just, I think it could be really, really fun. Because yeah. they're just such good shows. Yeah. Like such good shows. So and fun. Yeah. If you haven't watched that, please go and watch it. It's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, and that was our BlizzCon experience. It was amazing. Um, and we met loads of cool patrons, uh, many of whom we've met before, yeah. many of whom we met for the first time. Uh, we met loads of cool new creators who hadn't met before and things like that. And just generally, everything around the con was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the con itself felt a bit weird. Uh, and I don't even know how much of that would have been Blizzard's fault and how much of that was kind of... Uh, sort of forced on them by the venue and it's like this is yeah. how we do things now yeah it's, it's uh, it was, it's, it's it was different it was different all like all over the map yeah you know yeah which gives us about half an hour to talk about Ooh. the other news of the day yeah uh which is 10.2 because uh blizzcon obviously announced the world soul saga and uh yeah we don't have to go through all the that war again. within mm -hmm. and stuff and we've given our opinions on that in the weekly reset so we if you have... want to go and have a look at that you can you can uh see it but just for the record uh excitement about the world soul saga Debbie, what yeah. are you thinking about that Def definitely excitement definitely like you know looking forward to just having an uh, overarching narrative that lasts for a little while knowing that like characters i like won't just disappear where they might disappear but they'll come back at some point Maybe. And, and then the it, i guess the idea is the kind of wow story as we know it will wrap up with that yeah well and that's the idea who knows what will be next well, so I, do I you like think that. do you think this is something i've been thinking about a lot recently mm -hmm. And, you know, because I've watched the presentation a lot since as well, trying to kind of get to the bottom of every little thing he says. Uh, Chris Metzen. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I called the war within the war beneath in um, <laughs> our interview with Taryn Gregory. Because like I say, it was literally minutes after the announcement and stuff. And, and they just announced three expansions. And the thing about Midnight, very easy title to remember. The thing about Last Titan, very easy title to remember. The World Soul Saga, even though I keep on calling it the World Soul Trilogy. Does anyone else do that? Yeah. I'm always calling yeah. it the World Soul Trilogy. It is a trilogy, isn't well, it? I mean, it is, right? Yeah. Although you could make a, a pretty a pretty solid case of the fact that it actually starts in Dragonflight. Um, oh, yeah. Because a yeah. Riddicron is 100% going to be a baddie that goes throughout that saga. Mm. I, I, he's going to survive until the last Titan, I think. Mm. Uh, I don't think he'll be the last boss of the expansion or whatever, but I, I think he's in line to, to survive until the last Titan. Um, something that pe a lot of people have picked up on is last Titan will be set at least in part in Northrend and in War of the Scaleborn, the latest novel, which I have not read yet because my I copy has not either. arrived. Um, but... There is scenes set in Eridicron's home there, which Ooh. is definitely in Northrend, Ooh. probably in Crystalline or maybe even underneath uh, where uh, um, uh, Ice Crown eventually goes. Nice. Um, but it's definitely in Northrend, and and so if his like traditional layer and home is there, it makes sense that that would be somewhere that we see mm -hmm. um, uh, in the Last Titan. So it, mm. it's very likely that he's going to be a baddie that goes all the way through this saga, and he's. In introduced in dragonflight right we mm -hmm. we release him from prison in dragonflight mm -hmm. uh so you know you could make a case that dragonflight is, is the real start of this um but yeah do you feel like uh so i, I was going through what he was saying and mm. do you feel like um it's kind of you you mentioned like wrapping up and i think there are similarities between it, there is a real kind of final fantasy 14 vibe about mm -hmm. the whole world soul saga this idea that with endwalker uh in final fantasy 14 they were like this is gonna literally just finish all of the story that we've been doing up until this point and you know leave us to be fresh mm -hmm. again after that so mm -hmm. all like the asian stuff or whatever and everything that has been the main story of final fantasy 14 endwalker brings it to a close sets us up for something else and that is definitely how the world soul saga has kind of been sold as well so with that in mind do you think things like the titans and the void will that be literally solved mm. sorted at the end of the world soul saga as in they're not things i mean they're always gonna be things that are there yeah. but they're just not things which are part of the main narrative of wow anymore it, after the world soul saga can you see that happening yeah it's tough because we've never known wow without all of those things yeah, exactly. happening if you know yeah. what i mean so even if even if an expansion you know focuses on something else there's always the character has been like 
I'll see you soon next time who like goes mm. away and then comes back. And then, you know, the, the, so I don't know. I actually, I, I kind of like the idea of wrapping up, but then I'm like, what, what would happen after that? Yeah. And I, and I can't even actually, I don't know how you, there's so many things to, to resolve that I don't see how they would do it. No. Um, yeah, I know exactly what but you're saying. saying that. I, I I like the idea of the setup of the saga of like the trilogy and then following the story throughout all of those. It does make the, um, I guess, expansion, you know, announcements at BlizzCon a little less hype. Well, honestly, <laughs> it's like, it's that thing of, you know, we're not going to get a proper expansion reveal no. for six time. years or something, probably something like that. You know? A long time. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind of wild when you think about it. Um, and, and it's going to completely change the, the the shape of Blizzard and WoW uh, expansion reveals, you know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get something, if we see something from Midnight mm -hmm. next BlizzCon. Oh, like that yeah. wouldn't surprise me. Honestly. Oh, like, I, 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 we, you know, I feel like we you would. You usually expect it to be revealed two years from from uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I it's already been revealed, right? So why not start showing stuff from it as and when, yeah. as and when it's ready? I don't know. Yeah, and and I, my concern with that, with kind of like you know, we re we resolve everything and then move on to the new thing. One, I can't con conceptualize what the new thing is. Two, like the last time we kind of moved on to something beyond Azeroth, it was like Shadowlands, right? Mm. And like <laughs> looking back on it, I there are things I enjoyed about Shadowlands. It was kind of a fun feeling of being in literal hell or uh, you know, <laughs> literal kind of semi purgatory heaven. But also like uh, uh I I started like longing for Azeroth stuff. <laughs> like very quickly. I was like man, I just want to be an elf in my little elf world again. Like, this is also serious. This is also, I mean, that's a different issue. That's like, that's Shadowlands issues. So yeah, so... Well, I, speaking of elves being in little elf world. Yeah. I mean, that is 10.2, right? Yeah, well, yes. Which, which I have loved even more than i expected to right official transition into 10.2 stuff here 10 because i've just noticed that behind you on on the brick wall yeah. uh, with your camera angle like that there is a big gap in the brick wall where <gasps> usually we have a picture of some sort there sometimes is. there's a picture of our D, &D party yes. uh, which i got commissioned to make which is just wonderful uh, and sometimes there's kind of like a, a, a wow background but we got a new wow background delivered uh in time for like we weekly reset about 10.2 stuff because nice. we like it to be relevant so let me just uh it is there let me oh, just are you gonna okay yeah right here we've got a bigger one than usual so I'm, I'm switching it up a bit yeah the box this arrived is, it's huge look. it's wow oh it's just, yeah it's just, it's just you gotta have the tree you, you gotta have the tree backdrop. i love that the reset backdrops are always yeah love they're always it real they're yeah. always printed on yeah. foam board. They are. They are. And that's they're what, always that's gonna actual print. That's, that's going to look gonna lovely. Go kind of like, I like to say, it's a bigger one than usual. Yeah. So I think it's gonna. I'm going to kind of get it around. Like, oh, I love that, Carly. Like, hey, you. love that. Oh, that's pretty good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, wow, nice. Oh, love that. Sweet. OK, good. Well, that works. Yeah, nice. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, official transition to 10.2. We've got maybe about half an hour to chat before uh, yeah, we have yeah, to. Yeah, totally. um... uh, Well, uh, we can't be too late today because we do have to go uh, to our, 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 our kids' school yeah, for a parent, par parent teacher uh, conference today. Yeah. Um, hooray! Uh, oh, you can see Tally's trousers. Good. Oh, whoops! Right. Wrong, wrong one. I've wrong put, one. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I know it's the Baldur's Gate one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah some point. Baldur's Gate screen um, is there. Uh, yeah. So I. So ten point two. Uh, I have loved this more than I thought I would, and I was I was lured in because I was like mm, elves. I'm, a, I'm, you know, oh, that's, another, that's another thing. That's another thing. I dropped my evoker. It was fun while it lasted. Yeah. But I'm not an evoker at heart. It's just, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it, f it feels really good to be a hunter again and to be a night elf hunter and to go back mm. to 10.2 and going, you know, into the dream. And, and I just like, ah, oh, I am absolutely loving it. I like the music is, is fantastic. The vibe is like spot on. Um, just like I'm, I've enjoyed the quests. Um, I've enjoyed the like the the catch up mechanics because well, I mean I they are touched, very relevant to you, right? Because touched you my haven't hunter been playing much. Yeah. No, exactly. I haven't touched my hunter in ages, and it was suddenly a moment where I felt like, okay, cool. Like I'm not at a huge disadvantage if I want to, you know, coming back at the beginning of a new season, like 
whatever, you know, do some raids, like some casual raids or do some keys. Um, I'm not like extremely underpowered uh, as I was, you know, in the last one. And it kind of, that's, that's very like, you know, um, it, it dissuades you from, from wanting to do stuff. So I've, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Like the, I, I love, the, love, like, I love the music, love the music in the scenes. Um, the storytelling has been, has been fun. Um, I actually, while I was in the car this morning, uh, driving to look at paint chips, uh, <laughs> I like I started having thoughts about making a video uh like scripting a video for uh you know a, like about um what, what's how do I want to call it like narrative like realism and I'm thinking about this is these, the first I've heard of this well it's the first I've thought of it oh so, wow um uh so um uh so so uh, Tally did you did you watch the um the the new little cinematics that dropped the little <laughs> I did the, I well cinematics oh I yeah cinematics. I did they're, well, they're, I in, game, them they're in game cutscenes I watched them yesterday on the stream you did um and How did I you mean feel? well uh okay so uh, I I have also been playing through uh point two. Oh, there As we you go see, uh, get I've some got game content going. on there. yeah yeah there exactly we go. well I was just I was just sorting out a new screen so we could go to this yeah. Whoop. So uh, here I am, and this is where I got to yesterday uh, on the stream, um, uh, on on over on Twitch. And uh, as you can see, I've completed the campaign quest. Nice. I just need to hand it in, and I had just seen the cinematic happening there. Yeah. Um, which is like what people are calling spoilers in chat if you haven't done yeah so if you haven't quests, done anything obviously uh because there are two cinematics that people are talking about yeah one of them is uh the end of the campaign quests which uh, was not on the ptr mm. like this whole series of quests was not on the ptr it was really really good to play it yeah um and it's cool people are calling it the avengers assemble right uh cinematic yeah. and then there's the raid ending cinematic mm -hmm. as well which kind of comes in two parts uh, and people are pretty down on both of them, Evertel. Have you had a chance to watch them? I have had a chance to watch them. Um, what's your opinion? So, uh, I really enjoyed the Avengers Assemble mm -hmm. cinematic because I played it as part of the quest. And then you do the quest and like fucking Cadgar is there. Yeah. All yeah, of your yeah. buddies are there. So maybe Rex we are there. Here, right? Yeah. Um, so, so there is, uh, you know, the, the attack on Amirjasil has started. Amirjasil is in bloom. Mm -hmm. It is getting ready to kind of come into Azeroth, <laughs> come into mm -hmm. the world. No, none of it sounds good when you say that. No. To, 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 to appear yeah. in the world. To leave the dream yeah yeah, yeah. and um it, uh maybe i can put a spoiler button up yeah, yeah i'll put the spoiler yeah, button up so so i've got, yeah, a, got a red spoiler button up now so you will know when we finish talking about spoilers by when we take the red spoiler button yeah, exactly. um we'll be a few minutes i'm afraid yeah and uh yeah uh uh Tyrande, no uh alex Straza is like it's weird i've put out messages uh all over azeroth asking for help uh, telling them that this is really important uh, and um, no one's got back to me. It's really weird. So we're just going to have to go and defend it ourselves. And we go and obviously we're getting our asses kicked, man. There oh, is yeah. some, another uh, buzzword that's been in the conversation about WoW recently is the Disneyfication of WoW. Oh. Now, this always happens in WoW discourse. Yeah, you get does. like a few words, a few phrases uh, that are kind of popularized by big creators when they're criticizing the game yeah. uh, or critiquing the game, I should say, rather than criticizing. Mm. Um, and, you know, in, in the context those creators bring them up, mm -hmm. they often make quite a lot of sense mm -hmm. in, in, in the kind of quite specific context that they're using those phrases. So like uh, respecting the player's time was one mm, of them. Yep. Uh, um, you know, like uh, slot machine kind of loot and stuff yep. was one of them, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And um, at the moment, one of them is Disneyfication. And what a lot of time happens is that people watch the creator using that word in a way that makes sense and is quite insightful mm -hmm. and then they adopt it and unfortunately as a community it often gets used in a way which is quite not yeah. not originally how the creator intended it and no. sort of a quite a shallow way really. just and becomes think, a buzzword yeah totally community. and i think right. that's definitely what's happening with the whole disneyfication thing um yabara said he wanted to make blizzard more like disney yeah but not in the sense that you know it's 
in, in like an art style yeah. or and, and this is what i mean like or and that's in, like in, on a in, in terms level, of in right? terms of the content yeah. he meant from like a franchise point of yeah. view he meant from like you know we're going to have movies and we're going to have films and we're going to have like this and that and that and we're going to have more merch and we're gonna, like it's going to be this cross platform thing that's what the he multiverse. meant when he was talking about yeah. making it like disney yeah. but yeah and and so people often bring that up and are like yeah well he said it was going to be like disney it's like yeah but a lot of people time when people say the disneyfication of wow they just mean it's too cute yeah it's too low t yeah it's too feminine oh my God, uh and yeah. is crying and like so it's, <laughs> it's just probably worth pointing out that um just like in all of my favorite disney movies um in this quest that you do this week uh there are literally the smashed battered oh bloody God. corpses Horrible. of actually, night elves everywhere I, you're literally wading through yeah. them these battered corpses are just like littering the floor there's blood everywhere that actually um, shocks me when i saw that well, i was I, like it oh, reminded me of my on. favorite disney movie um because <laughs> if i if i see a disney movie and and there's not like just smashed bloodied corpses everywhere then i'm like whoa <laughs> Come on, Disney. Yeah, come on, guys. I come here with expectations. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, like, God. so yeah, there's right. there's uh, there's that, right? And uh, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like people are quite selective uh, in what they're actually talking about when they talk about the disnification of WoW, right? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's still plenty of violence and stuff. Now, it's never going to look like Elden Ring or something. Um, like Because that's just WoW. And WoW has always been a mix of, you know, bloodied corpses and cartoony, goofy stuff happening as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, of course. Don't you remember in Cataclysm when the whole zone was basically just uh, Indiana Jones? Yeah, uh, yes. And yeah. like the goblins with the Nazis in yeah. Indiana Jones. And yeah. like, it's, it's yeah. just always been the it's thing. It's just right? a mishmash of pop culture. Yeah, like harking markers. to old school Disney, Mufasa's death. Yeah, I love that bit in The Lion King where Mufasa gets ripped apart by the antelopes yeah. and there's blood everywhere and just bits of Mufasa just like, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the antelopes have uh, all gone, or not antelopes, uh, what were they? Wildebeest. 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 The wildebeest have all gone through and like Mufasa's like smashed bloodied corpse with just like bits mm. hanging off him yeah. is there like he's got an eyeball hanging out <laughs> and and simba's like <laughs> um yeah yeah uh so like yeah wow has always been a mix between the goofy fun stuff mm -hmm. and the and and the kind of like violent -y war stuff and yeah. that is kind of summed up pretty well in, in that quest line and mm. you then kind of realize that the reason that the uh um the reinforcements haven't come is because they're trying to but there's like a barrier stopping them yeah. entering the emerald yeah. dream that farak has put up yeah. so uh you then go and disable the barrier and then um all of the all of the reinforcements alive, uh, arrive and people aren't happy about that i, I mean, don't, don't like that moment i loved that moment i like genuinely i just thought it was great like i they they like everyone just comes in you have like all of your like supporting crew and like the centaur and like our wizards and our buddies and just like it and i was like cool literally my i just went cool and then you do <laughs> yeah. the and then you and then you have the quest where you you don't you know it's like you know help you know um sound the horn and inspire uh you know some companions and i was you you have to do whatever like five five companions or something but i was literally flying around the map like looking to choose which ones i wanted to inspire i was like oh rexar's there awesome i'm going to oh, i haven't actually done that bit yet that's oh, the have you not bit done i'm it? gonna do yeah oh. You see, like it's it's just you know, and it's just it's just a quest, but it feels like it's really ramped up. Like you've got your whole like look at all of your fighters, like you've got everyone yeah, there. Like cool. that, I enjoyed the battle, and I enjoyed like I just I just thought it was I thought it was fun. So I I hadn't actually seen that cinematic out of context, um, or that cutscene rather, and uh, watching it like as I was playing, I was like, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And, and I don't Fine. think it came out of nowhere, which is another criticism. Like that no. whole quest line is like, yo, we need the reinforcements. I've sent it. And I like the idea that those messengers that uh, Alex Straza sent out, mm -hmm. she's not anyone. She's Alex Straza. Yeah. So those messages, they go right to the faction leaders. Yeah. And the faction leaders are like, whoa, that does sound bad. I'm going to sort this out myself. Yeah. Um, and I love how they just appear. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's, it's funny having, I, I said this on stream yesterday, but it, people are banging on about that little cutscene so much and kind of comparing it and obviously there is a scene like that in avengers sure. but also comparing it to avengers so much 
it kind of makes it feel like Avengers is the only movie you've ever well, seen. Yeah, I know, I know, but <laughs> it's like, on, oh, like this this scene has got very this, strong Avengers vibes. This, says the guy that's only this, seen Avengers. This is the first time that kind of <laughs> someone in chat mentioned it's like the send in the cavalry. Like it's not the first time that's ever been used in like any kind of media or video game or movie or book, right? And so it's just like, it, and and that's the thing. So like I. I, I want to explore this idea of why people like hate on uh, WoW stuff, specifically in game cutscenes, so hard. Like, uh, and and to be fair, the other one I thought was extremely lame. Oh yeah, the the raid ending's yeah, lame as. Yeah. Now, let's be yeah. clear here. Yeah, I'm totally stanning the standing yeah, the Avengers Assemble yeah. cinematic because it rocked and it was goofy and it was fun yeah. and I felt awesome when they all arrived. They were mm -hmm. all like da 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 da. And yeah. by the way, the Dragonflight music playing when they all arrived yes. as well. So that was good. like right. mwah, 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 right. mwah, chef getting, gift. That was yeah. brilliant. You getting the it dragon was amazing. Is, yeah. Oh, it was yeah. so good. Um, and because I I'm a huge fan of the uh the Dragonflight um like uh motif i think it's really really good yeah uh and the only one i like more than the dragonflight motif maybe in the whole of world of warcraft is the anduin theme and i love that we we've got a, a three expansions of like just constant anduin theme from now on <laughs> it's like everything that happens yeah, it's anduin yeah. theme that was the best thing about the cinematic trailer was that you know it gave us like three different versions of the anduin theme it gave yeah, us yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Da, 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 da. it also gave us the very sad version Bling. Gling, gling, gling. And it also gave us like the kind of weird version. Oh, you can do so much with that theme. It is like, it is the most yeah. versatile theme in it's, WoW. It's, and I love it. It's, it's, it's so good. <laughs> so so, so having, he, I stand the Avengers Assemble one and I will yeah. stand that. Oh, like, oh I remember when I was love when, playing the quest. Dude, You're when I was love getting to quest. it, when I was doing the quests and when I was getting to it on stream, people were in my chat like, Ooh, mm -hmm. he's going to get there. This is so lame. <laughs> it's so bad. I was like, what are you talking about? That was brilliant. That was yeah. like silly fun, like yeah. a great little kind of yeah, exactly. stone to that quest yeah. in my opinion exactly. now here's the thing right you're allowed to have a different opinion that's absolutely great you it's all subjective like it. after all yeah, like you're on. not wrong you're not bad you are not stupid if you think that's the worst cutscene you've yeah. ever seen uh i would question if you've seen the raid ending cutscene if you think that one is the worst <laughs> cutscene because you've ever seen. that <laughs> because... one oh mm -hmm. i yeah i actually okay, was give me, like give me, i have not heard your opinion on this Evie, actually I so i would love i'd love so to hear it lame and like i just wow you're going in you're going in hard on this yeah. one yeah but i I, I, cause I was no, and I was prepared to not have this opinion. Cause I was like, oh my god, if I hear someone say the disnification of WoW again, I'm gonna just like eat. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just gonna be so. I'm gonna be so, so angry. But and then I went in and I watched it and I was like, oh yeah, actually, it's the and and again and this ties into like what I want to eventually like maybe turn into a video about like why we uh, why we hate things like this like rightfully so sometimes there's the kind of like the um the labor delivery okay let's have a little recap for people who don't know what's <laughs> yeah. going on here as well yeah. uh i wonder if i can bring the spoiler book up again yeah. yeah so um the final uh raid is an absolute banger by all accounts yeah i've like, done uh, I've everyone done, is I've done loving the so raid <laughs> everyone is loving the raid everyone thinks it's really really good yeah. the the dragon riding boss is apparently really fun it's exciting it feels big and that's something i do like about 10.2 is there is a real sense of occasion mm -hmm. in protecting the tree and like all the all the kind of stuff that's been going on for the last couple of weeks there's a real buzz in the air about this new tree and the fact that we're gonna have to protect it it feels significant it feels big and i really really like that um and i think from what i've heard i'm going to raid tonight completely unprepared mm -hmm. but from what i've heard um that carries on into the raid mm -hmm. now the raid ends with when you kill firak 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 when you kill firak a pre-rendered cutscene plays of uh the um uh the aspects kind of all being all like zzz, zzz, power or anything, which is actually yeah. really cool yeah. and them getting empowered Their eyes are glowing and right. then uh on wowhead it plays straight afterwards but in the game you actually have to walk up to i think it's alex straza and click on her oh okay yeah which actually by That's itself is something actually. that a lot of people big aren't difference. actually taking into account yeah uh, and then it's not like get... pew pew for exactly. and then something just and then, it, then yeah. it changes to an in-game cutscene, which look great these days mm -hmm. but do not look as good as the uh the pre-rendered ones still and then it it, it it has it's basically a conversation scene where um 
they are talking about how they have been empowered by Azeroth herself mm -hmm. not, not by the titans yeah. which by itself is a weird thing is Azeroth yeah. not a titan that's for another conversation well. but uh they you know instead of being by uh uh why won't you just play it because uh it's the raid ending cinematic and our raid night is tonight uh so so yeah i i can't just go in by myself and 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 do the raid i i go in with my my guild and we'll we'll do it then and even then you know we're ballers but it'll probably take us a while to do it on heroic might take you um, a little while so yeah exactly so i have not played it myself yet sorry about that everyone bad journalism right but um uh also but i, I am also experiencing it in exactly the same way as most of you guys as well so yeah. we're on a level here that's kind of good um and uh yeah they talk about it and they're all like wow we, we're empowered by it and um Axtraza has this really dorky moment where she's like oh i see oh. i understand now so oh i understand now i thought we could only survive by taking back our power but then I realized it was not ours to take. And um. Caligos is all like, yeah, it's all about us being a family. And then Virenoth is like, hey, I know I hate the Titans and everything, but this isn't Titan stuff, right? So this is fine. Yeah. And they're already happy and they're all real friends and stuff like yeah. that. And um, yeah. So yeah. Why why is it bad, Evie? Um, so, so yeah. So there are a lot of things going on. One, there's like the, the aspects... I mean, they are aspects, right? And they keep and they keep describing oh, their um spectral power. Oh, I just that, <gasps> stop it! I was like, every time they said aspectral power, I was like, stop, stop, because <laughs> I feel like I haven't even actually heard that word like in game. And is I was that, like, is that like when you put a nipple you on your bum? An aspectral power. <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, so there's that, and then there's all the characters. I know that they are aspects, or former aspects, or renewed aspects, whatever we want to call them, but like, so they are these like beings who are lofty and beyond mere mortals, so that's how they've always delivered their lines, but I found it really, really tedious. It's kind of turgid. It's really turgid, and it's really, and, I, and this is what actually got me thinking about like making a video about like why we hate this stuff so much, because it's like, one, it's about like how you do dragons and like big powerful beings, and like, two, it's about how WoW is never, you've never had like naturalistic dialogue, Would you know, if you want to no, call dialogue No, and that decision that goes way back to vanilla. Oh, and, and that and is like, just yeah. in the DNA of the game. Like that is just what makes WoW WoW. You have characters talking in a way that's like and it's also it's about like delivering information like the characters give you information like it's essential because you're playing an mmo and you need to figure out where you need to go next and what quest you need to do next and how you do it so you're never going to be able to bury like that information in particularly like florid language so it's you know it's just how the game works and likewise when you're delivering information through these like one minute cutscenes you're you're doing that as well um so they have to balance kind of telling a bit of story and giving you some emotional payoff but also telling you what's happened and mm -hmm. what's going to maybe happen next and so so there are like lots of things going on and but still with all of that i really i just i like i was like oh that, mm, does it have to be that way and the thing is i loved listening to Caligos talking about the power of family and friendship as part of like his quest line, like the blue dragon stuff. Yeah. Like this isn't the first time we've heard that. And when that played out, I was like, like, <laughs> you know, I mean that the whole blue dragon bit is, is incredible. So it's not, it's not that the, that is bad in itself. It's just, I, and again, I think, you know, I've watched this out of context. I haven't actually seen it. I haven't had the like payoff of murdering Farak yet. Mm. I haven't had the moment to like stop and take a selfie with my raid team. And then I haven't had time to like walk over and talk to Alex Straza and see how she's feeling. So I think people are watching this. There is this. more separation between those two scenes than I think people yeah. realize. Um, yeah, because it looks really janky and odd when it goes from that really nice albeit very very short pre-rendered bit into mm -hmm. the uh like in-game cutscene yeah. it looks really janky and also 
I'm not in that cutscene. What's the point of making yeah, it like an in-game cutscene if I'm not in it? And likewise, the Avengers Assemble one as well. It's like, yeah. waste of opportunity. Put me in there. Get me in there. It's, like, it's, rallying yeah. everyone. Like, absolutely. Like, how many how many times have I seen myself holding the heart mm. of Azeroth, like, in a in a scene? Like, just give me more of me doing that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I agree. So, there's zero... So, as we've seen it, there's no context, apart from what we know. I, I kind of disagree. Uh, I think... Uh, I think the biggest problem with the um, scene, uh, bear in mind, I've just been saying how bad and turgid it is and sure. everything like that. So just remember that. That's <laughs> my that's my overall opinion. And I've seen a lot of people mention that there's no context and mm. you just did it then. I think actually the problem is that the scene is in the wrong context because obviously there is context to the scene and the context works completely against what the scene is. The context of that scene as it stands is that it is a scene that plays at the end of the raid yeah. and no one wants that scene no. at the end of the raid. Sorry, so just like, so I can interject yeah. quickly. I guess what I say, what I mean, there's no context. There is like we we are not experiencing the context sure, that it sure, should sure. be in. Oh, well, exactly. That's so what I, mean. the, like, I think the scene is yeah. in the wrong context. So we, I, I, yeah, and, I agree and, with and, you. And, and like, so, you know, when you win the raid, what you want to see is you want to see Firak. Rock. Rock. You want to see Farak. The rock. Yeah. Being all like, ah. You got me. You smell. You're rubbish. And F like you, like, F your mother. Like and, he and just then, spontaneously combusts yeah, into and, a pile of ash. Exactly. And, like, and then Extras is like, no, F you. Your mother smells. Like that. Like that's what you want to see. And that's all they needed. Yeah. That's all they that's needed. It, that's it. And then if you'd gone back to a Mirjasil, like, and then maybe like you find like this orb or whatever, who cares? And you take it back to a Mirjasil, and then you give it into Alex mm -hmm. And then the exact same cutscenes happen mm -hmm. as we got at the end of the raid. Yeah, we're not having this conversation because people would be like, "Well, it's a bit lame, but who cares?" Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. like it, the, the the problem is that it goes into that at the end of a raid, and people don't want to see it at the end of the raid. It's not a raid ending cinematic. Exactly. So like, if you take it out of that context, mm -hmm. which you can't, and mm -hmm. people shouldn't because mm -hmm. it's there. Yeah. But if you were to take it out of that context and put it in the context that that scene should be in, which is a hand in after the event, mm -hmm. like that is a hand in after the event cinematic if you've ever seen one um and then suddenly in that context it's like oh, oh whatever because the, the, yeah. the thing yeah. in my opinion the actual story that is being told in that cinematic forget mm -hmm. how it's being told yeah the story being told is good like the the dragons become aspects again yeah but this time they are blessed by uh, Azeroth Azeroth. Herself, herself. And, and that's right. actually really cool gonna be very like they are now uh her aspects mm -hmm. like, that's how they describe yes. themselves that's gonna be very interesting going right. into the world soul uh, yeah. style, right like yeah. they are on the side of azeroth mm -hmm. not the titans so when like that that has all kinds of implications coming up like later mm -hmm. on and stuff and how that could go that's like really interesting um really interesting that there is that pretty strong suggestion honestly that none of them seem to think that azeroth is a titan or well, they I like, read this that is not Titan magic. I read um, that as like I read that as like the Titan magic is like collective Titan magic. Yeah. Okay, I get you. Whereas I think Azeroth is, is like for, sorry. Yeah, this I, is know, a I know that we're running out of time. So this is a conversation yeah. for another video, a yeah. whole video on this, yes, right? Probably. So so like definitely. Um but uh you know, and and the the dialogue is super clunky in that scene. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet, I think if you gave me those actors mm -hmm. and that exact script and you put me in a room with them uh to record it yeah be without like... and this is the important bit without any instructions from higher ups at blizzard mm -hmm. i think i could give you a better scene using the exact same actors and the exact same script like in terms of like naturalism and speaking well which yeah. makes me think it's not actually the script and it's not actually the actors i think the biggest problem that the dialogue in that scene has um, and I'm saying this as someone who writes plays, right? And, 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 and is a published playwright, not to suck my own dick, but like it's relevant information. If only you could. Uh, if I could, I wouldn't be on stream right now. I'd be downstairs where I would, would always be locked downstairs. in my room. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think the biggest problem with that scene and with the, with the, uh, dialogue in it is that somewhere before dragonflight even started when they were conceptualizing the entire expansion they made the creative decision to keep 
the way that the dragon aspects talk mm -hmm. consistent with how they've talked yeah. before. So it's like, this is how they talked in Cataclysm. This is how they talked in uh, BFA mm -hmm. when we last saw them. Yeah. And we want to keep them consistent. This is how they talk. And in an expansion where they do all of the talking most of the time, that's a really, really bad idea. Mm -hmm. Like a really bad idea mm -hmm. because it just makes everything janky yeah it just makes like it's impossible to listen to alex straza delivering her lines like this yeah it's, it's so, impossible yeah. to take it seriously but those what she's just said in my little example is fine yeah it is fine but it sounds ridiculous because of the way she says it yeah and you know the dialogue would still be clunky but nowhere near as clunky as it turns out and that's why every time abyssian talks who isn't bound by yeah. those rules yeah, cool. he sounds, sounds great fine. and he sounds, sounds fine. natural and yeah. not because he's a better actor than yeah. the other actors yeah. it's because he is not like chained to this janky old way that people used to speak in wow yeah uh, and the dragons are mm -hmm. and like at some point there's been a creative meeting and someone has been like it's iconic how the dragons speak you know that we're used to it from kata they can't just change how they speak i think we should keep it consistent mm -hmm. and that decision was made and in hindsight that was a terrible decision <laughs> because it's given us stuff like this yeah and and i and, and i this is something i want to like think about in this video which i'm just like brainstorming now but like you know like what what why do they you know why do they have to be that way and like yeah wow is never going to have like super naturalistic dialogue well, it ever it has in some I feel but like this is but you look but, at old soldier and stuff yeah and yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. It, you know, so there are there are moments for it, but like, why did this kind of fail, right? And yeah, uh, Azeroth, I was thinking about Baldur's Gate three, which is a completely different game, and like just just polar opposites in terms of like like delivery and voice acting and stuff. And so yeah, so uh, it 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 was so there's like a context issue with that, mm -hmm. which I don't know how I'm going to feel until after I do it, you know? And there's also the fact that like, we are, <laughs> we consume like wow content and we data mine stuff, which, you know, is like a whole other, whole other discussion. And we, we are fed these things and we are fed like a one minute clip mm -hmm. after playing how many hundreds out of hours of this game. And so we hinge all of this, like, we, it's like we, people are just like this is it this is the end this is the one minute okay, so that is like that that's important as well i just want yeah. to address something that people are saying in chat like, yeah so apparently belila rewrote the scene in the video that's awesome right and i'm sure it is better oh, cool. yeah but you're missing like the main thing here is that belila was allowed to write what he wanted to write yeah like one of the things we're talking about here is that these cinematics like there's so much creative in like like Belial could have the job of directing that cinematic, and that's why I was very keen to state that I could use the same actors and the same script. But as long as I had no directions mm. from people more important than me in the company, yeah. then I could give you a better scene. But the thing is, there is no situation where I wouldn't have instructions from higher ups at the company. And likewise, Bell, if he was writing this scene, yeah. like in the, if he was working for Blizzard and writing this scene, he would not be allowed to do whatever he wants because no one can. Like every Everyone's working from like uh john height's instruction and terran gregory's instruction and then there's like you know somewhere along the line there's probably mike yabara's instruction from what yeah, this cinematic course, has to be course. and like you know there is um there's so many different instruct and like it has to last exactly this long mm -hmm. like it has to last two minutes two seconds and when i say that not two minutes one second not like two minutes three seconds like these are the things that go into this and and yes i think if someone is allowed to do what they want, then you're going to end up with a better product a lot of the time. Absolutely. Uh, but then you have to make sure it's consistent with everything else in the game and, and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, if Bell's allowed to write it however he wants, I have no doubt that it would be better than the scene we got. Yeah. But the person who wrote that scene was not allowed to write it how they wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to it's, bear it's, in mind. It's, it's worth remembering. Um, like, yeah, exactly. And then, then another thing is that people are like this is it this is the end this is the final cutscene of the game and now it's over and it's like no because we're gonna get like you know pre-patch stuff for well, yeah, the, and, like, and in the next expansion really and, so the story's not over there's gonna be more like for you know not a, like a huge peak but there's gonna be something else yeah right? um so there's like this thing where 
we are judging it like this is the end of the story of Dragonflight, mm-hmm. and it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there is plenty more. So- there's loads more story even after that in the game now. Yeah. Uh, that that is kind of like eking out as people kind of unlock it and see it and stuff like that. But we've also got three more patches of story, <laughs> um, in this in this game too. Yeah. So I think in many ways this is, you know, despite how bad it is and things like that. I think uh, it is also maybe a victim of the slight restructuring that uh, WoW expansions have had and that Dragonflight has, whereby we are judging this like the end of the story. And and, it, mm-hmm. and it's, it's just not. It's just not the end yeah. of the story. Now, I don't blame anyone for judging it like the end of the story because no. that's our expectations. And yeah. I think the major failing of this cinematic is that it does not meet players' expectations. Mm-hmm. Like... We have expectations going into a raid ending cinematic, mm-hmm. particularly the last raid of an expansion. As players, we have those expectations. Mm-hmm. And this cinematic did not meet those expectations. Yeah. In a different context, in a different place in the game, in a different, like, just even as simple as outside the raid, handing it in and stuff like that, it works much, much better. Because the story beat is great. The story beat is fine. Yeah, the I, story beat makes plenty of sense. Mm-hmm. It's just the delivery of it. Yeah. And and the context of where you see it and when you see it is part of the delivery. This mm-hmm. is all, all part of it. So the way the lines are said, the way lines are written, if you like, the way uh, you see it and where you see it, the context is just completely wrong. Yeah. And and people just wanted to see Farak blow up yeah, and they wanted to see him they wanted because he's such a great baddie he's such a good baddie he's such a great baddie that's they just the, want to see him be like oh, you all suck you blow here's my that, dick uh, and then die yeah, like that's, that's what they want that's, that's, that's what that's, I want exactly exactly that is that is the payoff that like people are waiting for so when you hear that it's like oh we've 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 data mined the new and cinematic yeah. and it's like but it's not it's it is that but it also isn't and so yeah so i think it's a victim of all of these things but also like it's like you say i don't think the de- like actual delivery of it is, is like superior so yeah yeah, that yeah. Is a, so yeah. Uh, i think i think like i think the reaction to the cinematic has uh been fair i think it was like as soon my first reaction when i saw it was like oh no yeah i know it's like <laughs> like it's, you want it to be good right yeah yeah you want it to be good so 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 much mm-hmm. and you're like you watch it and your first first reaction isn't even like oh this sucks your first reaction is just like oh no oh yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about this forever aren't yeah, we yeah. uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and and like and it's just that thing of yeah it's just not it's not the ending that the final raid in dragonflight deserved because the expansion has been an absolute banger 10.2 is really really good yep. the raid by all accounts is top draw i look forward to, to going into that tonight completely yeah. blind <laughs> um <laughs> I like without like I'm copying my copying my talents and wow head the second before i go in and then Jealous. going in yeah totally um and uh yeah we just in a different world this cinematic could exist exactly the same as it is now but you have Firak blow up, and that's a pre-rendered cinematic. It doesn't need to last very long. It needs to last 20 seconds. Firak just like, Matt Mercer just giving it some. Oh, like, yeah. I'm melting or oh, something, I love, right? I love hearing yeah. his little voice pipe in. Oh, like, man. It's so good. Yeah, it's so exactly. good. And then you go and you give it in, mm-hmm. and you get that exact same scene. It still wouldn't mm-hmm. be WoW's finest moment, no. but it would be perfectly acceptable. Fine. And fine. And you'd be, be fine. like, well, that was a bit janky and a yeah. bit cheesy. And that was a minute out of, like, my 500-hour uh, yeah. game experience exactly. but, I'll but live. fine whatever man at least yeah. the raid ending cinematic was a banger <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah so yeah and exactly. I, I think there's there's a world where this cinematic works perfectly just as it is mm-hmm. uh but it's not as a raid ending expansion I, 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 as a cinematic and i think that's the main problem with it it's it's the wrong cinematic in the wrong place at the wrong time simple as that yep that's what i think it's a nice way to wrap things up yeah i think, I think so too so uh yeah um, thank you everyone for joining us today for episode one of uh, a wow podcast obviously there was so much more we could have talked There's about today so much more uh, and i guess that's good because we'll be able to talk about it next week and that'll Hooray. be fun won't it that'll oh i look great. forward to that so when are we doing Hooray. these are Hooray. we doing these on wednesday uh, thursday we'll be doing these on either wednesdays or thursdays okay depending whoops depending on like you know when 
is the best time to do it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Because like, uh, I personally like having Wednesdays just to catch up with like all what, the new stuff th- that's Thursday's from. Thursday's a pretty good day. Thursday's right? a good yeah, day. Maybe it's nice to Thursdays. jump in and play some new stuff and then, and then get in on a, a, a Thursday. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's a bit closer to the actual weekly reset then. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to be repeating. We'll, like, we'll I will be repeating out. a lot of what I've said here. Yeah. Um, in the weekly reset, but in scripted yeah. form, yeah. formulating ideas here, which we then script for the weekly reset. Yeah, perfect, down with that. perfect. It, uh, we're still in two minds about whether to have this podcast be part of the main channel, like it is right now, or to start putting it on the second channel instead. That means it would stream from the second channel as well. Yeah. We'll like to have it streaming on Twitch at the same time next week. So let us know your opinion about that in the comments as well. That'd be really, really nice. Uh, also, if you haven't yet followed us on our brand new Instagram account, <laughs> You laugh at me. I am, yes. But I am working hard to make this a, th- <laughs> make this a thing. Do and it. like Instagram content is hard, man. I was just yeah. like, it's going to be cute. Just photos of us doing stuff. It's like, no, you have to do like, I'm going to have to like do videos of me reacting to stuff. And oh. it's going to be in vertical format. I'm, oh. oh, God. If you are interested in that at all, take a look at our Instagram. It's there. Um, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let us know in the comments where you want to have it in the, the main channel or second channel uh, there's yeah. I think that with my YouTube head on the fact that this podcast is always going to get less kind of views than our, our usual videos it might mess up yeah. our uh, algorithm ah I hate that word it's <laughs> the worst isn't and it and an actual uh, podcast version oh god uh, okay, yes maybe yes. yeah uh, that sounds like an heavy job getting that up yeah. on Spotify and stuff yeah. like that yeah sounds yeah, good yeah, totally makes sense okay cool guys thank you uh, thank you for bearing with us at the beginning while we just get stuff sorted out uh, a little bit technically I like this set. I think this is this better is than good. the last setup we had isn't it yeah i still is. like a third camera uh but i will work on that and i'll get it somewhere yeah good and I'll, I'll get a good but i think and this is what i meant when i meant like this the stream oh I, I know that's what you meant I, I that's how i kind of yeah i just i just really want a, a, a camera angle where we're both in it yeah I, I don't know how to do that while we're both sitting here like this. It'll just have to be like in the back yeah, corner. You can just yeah. see us from the back. Um, and I'd love to get some guests on. I, I really Definitely. want Peculia to come on and talk maybe data mining and, and just general kind of, you know, no one knows WoW news like she does, right? No. Uh, but I don't want this to be a news podcast. I want this to be like a, just kind of us talking about chatting, our life in WoW games, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Just a chatty thing. Yeah. Uh, so we're not on the sofa, but the sofa is in view. And this is cozy. This is a cozy this is setup. Cozy. I love this. I love yeah, sitting yeah. in my extremely but comfy more like chair. A chat than a podcast. Yeah, I think that's yeah. kind of the vibe I, I I'd like to go for. Really. Yeah. yeah to I be agree. honest. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's guys. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, from me, Taliesin, and me, Avital. Until next time. Bye. Cheerio.